Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be finishing off these cornhole boards. I finally have nailed down a decision on how I'm going to decorate them and I'm ready to start that today. Uh, this is going to be the pirate board and I'm not going to do Blackbeard this time. I think I'm going to do a Calico Jack since, um, you know, he's another famous Charleston pirate. So I'm going to do a Calico Jack um, flag type of design over here with some words at the bottom and maybe possibly um, some whoop, some design around the hole right here. On this one, I'm doing a Charleston board, and I'm going to do that, that coat, the outline of the Charleston coast on here, which I'm going to actually have to hand draw because I don't have enough vinyl to use for this, which is fine. I know how to draw, so I think it'll work perfectly. And um, I finally got my cornhole bags, which are down here, and that will go into the chest that's in the back of this board right here. So I thought that was fitting to put the chest or the little cubby hole on the back of this one, being that pirates have goodies. So pirate chest. I gotta add the handle onto this board and then that will be done. Um, I'm gonna start the design now because I finally got my vinyl in through Amazon, which I will put a link in the description on this type of vinyl that I do use. I do like this one, it's really nice. Um, easy to apply and easy to take off. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. I still have to do a second coat and also fix the waterways with some blue because I kind of have a little bit of hiccups here and there. For the most part, this will be done later on today. I'm not going to torture you and have you watch me do it. And then I will be doing the vinyl part on both boards, um, which that's when I'll restart the video. But before that, we are going to have a little geography lesson about where I live. So I live right about here in West Ashley. So this island right here, this thing of land right here is West Ashley. So if you go through West Ashley, you get to all the plantations, Somerville, more inland areas, but I live right about here. Also right around this area is Charlestown Landing, which is the first settlement of Charleston. So when they came into the harbor, they settled up river um, right here off of the Ashley River. This is the Ashley River right here. This area right here is the Charleston Peninsula. So downtown Charleston is right in this area. This is the Battery. 
You have White Point Gardens and the Old Exchange Building and the Provost Dungeon is located in this area as well. The Provost Dungeon is where Calico Jack was held prisoner. When he escaped dressed as a woman, he got all the way to Sullivan's Island, which is right here. When he was captured, he was brought back to the Provost Dungeon and then later tried for his crimes and then he was hanged and buried in White Point Gardens, which is right around this area right here. Also in Charleston Harbor, you have Pinckney Castle, which is right here. This is not accessible to um, civilians or anybody. Uh, you have to have special permission to get on this island, which is very hard to get. Uh, then over here is Fort Sumter. Um, this is James Island right here, and on James Island you'll have Fort Johnson, which is right over in this area. Then this is the Morris Island. On Morris Island they actually had a fort, I'm not sure exactly what the name of it was, but the movie Glory was filmed here. Uh, they have the Morris Island Lighthouse, which is right out here. Uh, this is, again, Sullivan's Island, and on Sullivan's Island you have Fort Moultrie which is right here. This right here is Mount Pleasant. On Mount Pleasant you have cell, um, you have Patriots Point, which is in this area right here. At Patriots Point you have USS Yorktown that was that is docked here. The, um, Patriots Point you also have the cottages of Charleston Harbor, which is where I got married, which is like right here. You can see um, Castle Pinckney from our cottages which is really cool. Uh, this is Drum Island. It is, I think it was a little island, but then when they started dredging Charleston Harbor, they just filled it in more with the, with the dredging. And now it's huge and you can visit it, uh, you can get to it by boat. Uh, I don't can't really access the interior part of the island, but you can go onto the coast, which is a little bit sandy, has some really soft oyster shells. And at low tide, you can find shark teeth, which is really cool. This right here is uh, Daniel Island. If you go up the Cooper River, this is the Cooper River. That'll take you to the Naval Weapons Station, where I was, where I lived when my father was stationed here in the 80s. Uh, the uh, where his boat was docked was around this area. Okay, so I think we already went over. This is James Island. This is Morris Island Lighthouse. This is Folly Beach. This is Kiowa Island. So this is Kiowa. And this is uh, Seabrook Island. I don't know why it's all called the same thing when it's one, it's, two, it's one island, but it's called two islands, which is weird. So yeah, so Seabrook and Kiowa. This right here is John's Island. On Giant's Island, there's a bunch of plantations as well, some old places. The Angel Oak tree is over in this area. Uh, the Charleston Plata Tea Plantation is over in this area, which is really cool to visit. This is Watamala. And again, this is West Ashley, and this is where I live, right in this area. So this is the Stono River. And the Stono River is where I can get shark teeth. I have a special place on the Stoner River where you can find shark teeth. Uh, to, from the Stoner River, in 1881, they wanted to make where you can get from the Stoner River to the Asher River through Wapu Creek. And right where James Island and John's Island meets, uh, they blasted, I think it was in 1881, they blasted it and dug it out and expanded the area to be like a seven foot creek and now it's 60 feet, so that's how big it got. And in, during the Cold War, they strung up uh, netting from one side of the island to the other to prevent U-boats from coming into Charleston Harbor, which is really cool piece of history. So yep, yeah, this is Charleston, this is where I live. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I would be happy to tell you more history if you'd like to know it. Um, but now, next we're doing is vinyl, so stay tuned.
right everyone my cornhole boards have finally been finished last night I put on a few coats of Minwax spar urethane to protect them from the elements outside I also bought some cornhole covers that are weatherproof so when we decide to leave these outside if there's a torrential downpour or storm that comes through they'll be protected even more with that cover. So I'll put a link in the description below on the covers if you have cornhole boards or if you're gonna be making your own. It's good to have an outdoor cover, especially if you don't have any room to store these. I also added the handle to the South Carolina board. And on the back of the South Carolina board, I did the scoring system, which my golf tee should be here in a few days. So there's a couple holes drilled uh, above and below the numbers and the golf tees will go in each hole to indicate what points you have. And I will pause the video real quick and show you the cubby hole on the back of the pirate board. Give me one second. Okay, so here's underneath the pirate board. As you can tell, I marked it as the treasure because it's a treasure box. It has the X because the X marks the spot. We're gonna pop open the latch. Now let's see if I can open this up because it's very humid today and this might be stuck. So yep it's stuck. So give me one second. Okay so once you get your unstuck treasure box open inside you will see I have my cornhole bags stored which is really neat and it's just perfect enough to fit all the bags perfectly. So that's good. So go ahead and close this box. Lower this back down. And there you go. Those are my cornhole boards. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I did use my Cricut Air Explorer to do the vinyl parts of the, le the lettering and for pretty much pretty much everything except for the coastline I actually drew out and painted. So, But for the most part I used my Cricut Explorer so I will put links in the description of all the tools that I used to build this. Again, if you have any questions please leave them down below. Thank you for watching and please like share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for future videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Have a great day.